going to be a good idea. <laughs> um, welcome everybody to Rob's Funk and Junk episode 38. <gasps> dun, 38. Dun, 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 dun. That's where I've been all this time. <clears throat> and happy Easter to happy everyone. Happy Easter to thee. Today I have a very special guest, my wife, Rachel, who you've probably seen before, <laughs> you've met before. Looking like a scarecrow most of the time. No, not But it's Easter. So it's Easter, so we're having... Sparkles. I thought... We'd uh, we'd have a glass of what is this? There are other religious and non-religious celebrations available, so whatever there you're are. doing out there, have a lovely, peaceful day. Yes, indeed. Um, Should have done that at the end, shouldn't I? Never mind. We can do it at the end as well, yeah. if you like. Um, as you can tell, I've given Ray the nice headphones, and mine are the falling off headphones. Um, Ray's got the special mic, and I've got the cheapy thing here. Um, yeah, I just thought it'd be fun to have Ray on the podcast. <laughs> Glutton for punishment. <laughs> um, yeah, this is uh, my lovely wife who <clears throat> tells me what to do, how to do it, <laughs> and um, when to do it. And it works. And it does work. It works. <laughs> <laughs> she keeps me on the, the straight and narrow. Yes, indeed. Hang on a minute. Let me just turn my... Uh, Mike again down here a little bit. We've had, this is the first glass, by this the way. Is the first we're, glass. we're not halfway through a bottle. This I is felt, just I, I mild hysteria. I definitely felt like I needed a drink in order to do this. To Me too. <laughs> <laughs> I've already done about five camera angle tests, and, uh, and um, yeah, and uh, I, I, you know what? I was going to wear one of those today as well. I should have done. <laughs> That look good. Like smashy and nicey, yes. Smashy and nicey. I know they're jumpers, aren't they? Mm. Pastel um, colour jumpers. Um, yeah, sorry, I haven't been around for a week and a bit. I haven't done a podcast. I'm very late this week. And last week I just did a little video. I was in the studio. Where was I last you was, week? Uh, you were working with Jay, weren't you? I was in the studio with Jay for the week. Yeah. Um, I did a little video. You don't know this, but I did a little gear rundown video which you would have loved it would have been your oh. favorite kind of uh, youtube video was it really techy and it geeky was, yeah it was pretty no actually not at all there, there are lots of wires there were wires which tangled I up drives you up the wall oh gosh i can't even look down there that... i know it's a mess <laughs> it's a mess it makes me be sick in my mouth a little bit the... what was it you say <laughs> what Two things, there should be three, I'm going to add to it, that you say two things that never lie, children and leggings, <laughs> but also studio floor as well. That never lies. I'm going to turn your mic game down as well because it's, uh... see, I'm engineering. See? Well done. See what I'm doing? I'm not as bossy now, am I? Usually in the voiceovers, I'm really bossy. Yeah, Ray does voiceovers and it's like working for Mariah Carey. <laughs> Hang on one second. It's a bit. It is a bit. Um, I'll give you that one. What's that? I'll give you that you one. You do, yeah. You're quite demanding. <clears throat> I know what I want. So, um... <coughs> so I had homework, everyone. Uh, yes. When I did, when I sort of discussed having Ray on the podcast, I was like, I'm going to... I gave you... I set you the task. Of, you did. And it was quite... It was It was an odd task. It was... For me, it was quite complicated. It wasn't complicated. It was quite difficult because... And we say this all the time about how we listen to music. Yes. Unfortunately, we do have very similar tastes we in do. lots of areas. Yeah. But when I'm listening to a song, mm -hmm. I am predominantly listening to vocals and lyrics mm -hmm. as well as everything else. But predominantly, that's what I listen to because that's what I used to do. So I gave you the and task of picking, just very simply, just pick your five favourite bits of guitar. Yeah. Nothing stressy. No, but doesn't it doesn't have to be anything with me. It wasn't on it. stressy. Well, I did want to pick stuff with you on it, but I thought that might be a little bit contrived. <laughs> she couldn't think of anything she actually liked. More lemon juice. Oh, you like that one, yeah. 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 But ha, 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 ha. yes. Um But I just thought for the purposes of you know I like everything that you do anyway. I think Oh bless great. you. You don't actually some of the things you hear me playing in here, you go <laughs> yeah. What the hell is that? <laughs> Hang on, your mic is going nuts, darling. Sorry, You're I've got a very loud voice. Too loud in the microphone. I'm sorry, <gasps> too on. much fun being had. I know, <laughs> I know. Um, 
But yeah, I uh, I didn't say that with you in mind to pick something that I'd recorded. It's no, you just said, you know, pick pick some songs that you like that have got guitar on them. So let me explain. Uh, can I talk you up a little bit? My wife. No, I'm not going to say a good word. <laughs> My wife. My wife. Um, <laughs> she is, uh, well, she, well, she is a singer. Um, you used to be a singer. Mm-hmm. Um, but you are still a singer because you still yes, sing, sing very well and you've got you. an amazing uh, amazing voice, amazing sense of timing and phrasing. Just no one's listening anymore. And <laughs> harmony. Um, you have great harmonies. Thank you. In fact, you usually sing the harmonies. I usually rather sing the harmonies. Than, yeah, yeah. I find that fun. But Ray um, was an artist back in the day. How... Back in the Oh, God. See, you're good at dates. I'm not. I so know. I would have, when I, I even started. Met you. <sighs> Because I started before I, st I worked with the two mats, I, w I wrote a lot of stuff with a guy called Martin Bushel. So that would have been, oh no, I started late teens mm -hmm. with a guy called Bradley Carter. Yes. Who is a dance producer, was a dance producer. I don't, I don't know whether he's still producing, but um, it's a very long time ago. Um, <laughs> God knows. Um, and yeah. we started writing projects and bits and pieces to, and that's, when I had my first sort of this experience. Your, this is your ex Bradley Carter. It was an yeah. ex Bradley yeah. Carter, yeah. yeah. And he was in a band called The Rough Drivers. I don't know whether you remember them. Dance band had a couple of hits back in the day. Yeah. But that was very late on, actually. Um, funnily enough, just before we split up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but um, but yeah. yeah, we spent a lot of time in the studio writing, and at the time it was very so sort of, we we liked the kind of trip hoppy olive. Chemical yeah. Brothers, Massive Attack, those kinds of artists. Mm -hmm. So we were writing that kind of stuff. But at the time, um, Bradley was engineering a lot of dance music, um, a lot of happy <laughs> hardcore. Um, yeah. And, I mean, going way back, I was semi-classically trained on the piano and very quickly realised that that wasn't my thing. So I kind of stopped trying to read music because I thought it was like reading Chinese. Yeah. Um, just didn't have that brain for it. And then just started writing my own pieces, my own compositions at home. Um, I was very mm. influenced by Kate Bush You're and Tori Kate, Amos. Kate and, Bush fan. Yeah, massive Kate Bush fan. Huge. Um, like, I think most women <laughs> yeah. um, are big Kate Bush fans of my generation. Um, and then, obviously, studio was where I really... I love working in the studio. So that gave me some grounding and um, some experience, really. <clears throat> Unfortunately, we never got signed, but hey. But so you, you were, so just going back a bit, you, mm. when you said you were working with the two Matts, that's a producer called Matt Schwartz. Matt Schwartz Matty Schwartz and MJ Cole, so Matt yeah. Cole. That was very late on. So after the Bradley thing, mm -hmm. I started working with a guy called Martin Bushell, again, sort of singer songwritery stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and just kind of doing my 10,000 hours. Yep. When I think back and look back at it, mm -hmm. I did the 10,000 hours, but didn't quite make the, you know, full-time profession really. But um, I was doing my 10,000 hours. I was learning how to craft songs properly, yeah. learning how to, and Martin will laugh at this, not shortchange the listener, learning yeah. how to work with a producer, learning how to, how to have mic um, technique, mm -hmm. how to shape my voice, how my voice was sounding on different styles of music yeah. and how my songs, because I would write bloody 10 minute songs. Do you know what I mean? <sighs> yeah, a little bit self-indulgent there. And Mar Martin sort of taught me how to create a pop song or a song that was well um, set out, you know. Mm. Um, and then through him, I met Matt Schwartz through someone else vicariously. Oddly. So Matt Schwartz, he, he, wasn't he part of the Massive Attack? He worked with Massive, massive Attack. Massive Attack, yes. Um, Misha Paris he worked Misha Paris with. He wrote um, some stuff for Kylie Minogue. For, yeah, Kylie. Yeah. So a really, really cool dude who I then sort of started working on some dance music with. Mm -hmm. And <clears> Matty <throat> and I had, we did have a release um, called Oriel, which was sort of, the first tune that was picked up and I was paid for, which was lovely. <laughs> you, got a, you got a bit of a chunk. Got a bit you? of a publishing deal when 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 advances were quite <laughs> yeah. chunky. Yeah. And I nearly fell off my seat. Um, 
but that was released and then and then Matty and I continued to work together doing mm. sort of different styles of music I, I you know I do guide vocals for him a lot <clears throat> and then um it was basically in Soho recording studios that you had Matty Schwartz, Grant Nelson, MJ Cole, all those guys had studios. So we'd all kind of hang out together mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. you know, have a drink and lunch together and people were coming in and out. And, and that's when sort of Matty and Matty, Matt and Matty, got together and started this project and just asked me to do some guide vocals on. So they, w it eventually was called Distressors, but was that, did they have the name in mind? No, no. We all we all sat down and were looking around the studio. So it was a project based on you. Well, initially I was going to do guide vocals, right. and initially there it was like a Kylie esque dance record. Right. And at the time, I was really getting into my metal and my mm. rock, and so mm -hmm. there was this sort of collaboration of sort of dance music, mm -hmm. rock, you know, mm -hmm. very, very highly produced, polished yeah. stuff, mm -hmm. and it all kind of, I mean, MJ Cole's a highly talented, classically trained musician, you know, Matty plays guitar and bass and keys, mm -hmm. so there was a lot of there was a lot of power in that recording studio and a lot of ideas and mm -hmm. a lot of history. So classical, mm -hmm. mu uh, dance, you know, then the rock stuff started to come into play. And I'd already done a very kind of rough, very deep, like dark um, rock project called Wednesday's Child with Matt Schwartz that was basically just us mm. very late at night just putting down what we kind of loved and very mm -hmm. sort of Nirvana-esque and very roughly recorded. Mm. So we kind of took those ideas as well and mingled that with the distressor stuff. So um, working with those two, it was, it was again, it was another really interesting setup because I'd never been in a, in a studio with two producers mm. before and mm -hmm. we'd never, I'd, I'd never shared that sort of top line uh, you know, um, yeah. coming up with lyrics together. And it was, it. I found it interesting but clunky because mm. it was a lot of strong ideas and mm -hmm. going around and around and around to, to, to kind of come to a conclusion and come to a decision yeah. on certain tracks. And then other tracks, they would just come out of thin air and it'd be done it'd in be a day. Done. So we, we have picked, I've lined <clears> up a tune. Yeah. I'll play a bit of one of... Ray's tune. So this is your project with the band dis but that became Distresses. Distresses. So I'm going to yeah. play a song. It's called... Hello. Hello. <laughs> Hello. I didn't sing it like that. <laughs> Here it is. <laughs> I'm hoping this is going to work. Soon find out. Did you? 
Yeah, it's really cool. Yeah, thank you. Dad. I have heard that before, obviously. Yes. But yeah, so yeah. you, um, this is very strange. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm crap at interviewing anyway, but interviewing my wife is it really <laughs> weird. <laughs> um, relax. Dude. I know. Relax. You see my arms. See my yeah, body. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm surprised you're not sucking your thumb. Yeah, and well, that'd be in about five minutes. Oh, I've got sniffles. Um, so what happened with that? Oh, so we what? we finished a bunch of songs and then we got a wonderful band together, um, who very kindly went out and we did lots oh, and shit. lots of London gigs and festivals for free, bless them. Oh, what a surprise. What a surprise. But it was with, with the view that, you know, this is now the band and let's go and get a deal. Right. And we had photo shoots and we, we went and did all of these gigs. And, mm -hmm. and I think that, I'm trying to think how old I was at the time, probably late 20s, early 30s, late right. 20s. Um, I think what happened was it kind of imploded in a way. Mm. There were three very strong characters. There were three very different opinions going on. Mm -hmm. And, you know... I, I was sort of trying to get us a deal, not really knowing how to do that. I didn't have those tools in my toolbox. Yeah, they can't. Well, from what you said, they just sort of let. They yeah, made, go and go and find. Go you know, and... I I I I tried to get us a manager. There was a guy who I met up with called Rupert Lord, who managed Olive. Yeah. And so we were sort of in talks, and we just couldn't come to an agreement. And I think what happened was that it slowly started just just disintegrate. And mm. unfortunately, one one of the guitarists in the band he had a bit of a family tragedy. Well, not he had a huge family tragedy, which really kind of affected us mm -hmm. all, I think. And it really just shook the whole foundation of going out live. And right. And I think it got to a point where. You know, there's no money in it. And these musicians were giving up their time and their energy. Mm. And it just got to that point where it all kind of ground to a halt. Right. And that's my opinion of what happened. Mm -hmm. What, you know, what the other guys think may or may not have happened. I don't know. But that's not what I recall happening. And I think I just got very despondent and upset and very angry that... You know, it wasn't. It just wasn't coming off. It wasn't happening. Mm -hmm. um, so you you made the record, were sent yeah. out to sort of gig, and yeah. it's a. I mean, I've had that in the past where yeah. you've done stuff and it's not done what you wanted it to do. No, no, and, you... and I think that has an effect. It has a massive effect oh, on yeah. you because you're 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 giving up so much of your spare time. You're making sacrifices. Yeah. You're using your energy it's it's your soul yeah. that you're kind of giving away yeah and to have that kind of almost that feeling of nobody wants this nobody really whether that was the case or whether it just wasn't getting to the right people or whether it was that it was, wasn't getting to the right territories i don't mm. know whether the uk was the right territory for us personally with the kind of stuff we were doing it, i don't know it was i, mean, I don't know who knows you it's but it, it, there's all different layers to that onion, it's, isn't there? It's one of the reasons I, I sort of stopped <clears throat> wanting to be a producer, really, because I realised that it was so difficult mm. to get to work with an artist from start to finish. Mm. And then you then that's when the real work starts, yeah, is you're yeah. trying to get that thing signed. Yeah. And, uh, and when, you, when you don't know how that works, no. I, I was not. You it's, know, I was a, I was a singer. I was a songwriter. That's yeah. what I did. And then to kind of try and make contacts and mm. network, and mm. I had absolutely no clue at the time of how to do it. It's uh, so it's, you know, it's, it's salmon swimming upstream, really. Yeah, it's but not... we got some good music out of it. And again, you know, it's a journey. Yeah. It was an experience, and we had a lot of fun. We had a lot of tears. Mm -hmm. There was a lot of late nights obviously. <laughs> mm. Mm. And then I'm still working full time. Yeah. You know, trying to... Wasn't your main job. No, you were, no, you no. Job. God, if it had, I would yeah. have been on bread and water. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, a, but... it's a tough old game. It's a shit business. It's a shit business. <laughs> it is a tough game. But I don't regret it. No. Like, 
we got asked a little while ago if you could do ev do it all again what would you change and no. nothing no. because it it takes you on a journey and I've that music will always be sitting there it will always be ours yeah you know I get a lot of fond memories from that mm -hmm. you know and even though it wasn't a success in a way it was because it's there it's mm. made it's done um, well, you sound great on it. Thank you. Well, I've heard, obviously, I've heard all your, lots of your other stuff. Not all of it. Thanks, dude. It's all right, dude. Yeah. When it stops becoming fun, I think that's when you have to take a step back, and that's exactly what happened. Mm. Took a step back for a couple of years, didn't really want to have anything to do with any kind of music, and then... We've never, you and I have never sat in a room, really. No, really, we've, it's we've, so weird, isn't it's it? It's weird. We thought we were so, going to, yeah. but we've just not done it. No. It's odd, isn't it? And maybe I think that's... I find it weird to... I'll be really honest with you. Mm. I find it weird to sit in a room with mm. someone. Mm -hmm. That writing process, I prefer to have the back line or have an idea, go yeah. away, sit, get drunk, write my lyrics, listen to them again the next <clears throat> day. Yeah. Do do them out and then come back with something mm. rather than come up with oh she's, does that line work and does that line and I think that's where I kind of admire you and your ability to go in the studio with Jay or with one of your other bands and mm. come up with ideas so quickly and I think that's a bit of shyness I think I'm a bit shy where I right. want to kind of maybe a bit OCD. Wanting mm. to come up with that perfection, that perfection, or at least a good idea to come back and go, ah, oh, this is what I've come up with, <laughs> Derek. <laughs> um, but yeah, so yeah. I, yeah, it took a bit of time off, and yeah. then did, then the, Just... then started working with Mark Greenwood. Yeah, and had the best time working with that guy, mm. who was just yeah, you were heavy guitar. So you excuse the sniffing, by the way. I've got sniffing. the sniffles. I might get a tissue. You can't minute. leave the room. No, the I can't dogs leave. will leave. Yeah, the dogs will leave. We've, We've got, got them the all. Three dogs sat in the They're room all... with us as well. For once. I'm not going to ask them any questions. No, no, don't. They're all settled. It's brilliant. If I asked them what their favourite, it'd be meatloaf or something. <laughs> something to do with. Yeah. Snoop Dogg or meat something. Meat based. Meat based food. So I have <clears> asked <throat> you. I set you the task. Mm. Just Did over. You wish to accept we were sat it? in the garden the other day, and I set you the task of coming up with five of your favourite bits of guitar. Yeah, yeah. You then got all stressed and were like <laughs> thinking, "What am I going to do?" And I was like, "Just relax." No, I was overthinking it. I think you were overthinking. overthinking I was overthinking it. it. I was trying to think of. I was trying to think of my favourite artists uh -huh. and then the guitar within those tracks. But there were some of my favourite artists where the guitar wasn't the predominant. Thing. Thing. Yeah. Is that the right word? It's all right. It doesn't need to be the predominant. It could be. No. Uh, it just happens. It but just, some of some of the stuff isn't. Some of it isn't. You've chosen five. Yeah. I've chosen five. And I, and I think they're a good five. I. They are. I've heard them. I know they're good. But I uh, will try and refrain from getting nerdy and talking about what amps they well, use. Well, you can or... if you want. I'll just pour the champagne and <laughs> just get pissed. That's fine. <laughs> Sounds like a good idea. So number um, one we have here. This is ah. This is the solo of a song um, called Lessons in Love by Level 42. Woo woo! Who we were both fans of. Huge. Still are, I guess. Huge fans. Um, yeah, the first actual concert I ever went to was Level 42. Was it? Yeah. That's very cool. Yeah. And we probably went to the same... We probably did, Hammersmith. We did. Hammersmith, I went yeah, to that. that I was went when... twice to that one. So you... I was 16, I think. You were 16. Okay. <laughs> no. <laughs> Let's not go into that. <laughs> Someone will get, yeah, let's not go into it. <laughs> Someone will get arrested. <laughs> no. No. No, they won't. They won't, they won't get arrested. They won't no, get arrested. We're, we're joking. We're joking. Um, but Alan Holdsworth <clears throat> was on that gig. Wow. Alan Holdsworth. You didn't know he was on the gig because you just liked the songs. Oh, just, I thought they were a brilliant band. But this is the solo from Lessons in Love, which I'll play it. I feel like, Yay. I feel like Mike Reed or something or... or <laughs> <laughs> or Simon Bates. <laughs> or another DJ. <laughs> Alan Partridge. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Here we go. Jamiroquai. <laughs> Jerry Maguire. Here we go. Lessons in Love. Guitar solo time. He's playing a 335 in the video and he's not playing that.
short and sweet. Amazing. Yeah. Wait a minute. <laughs> Lovely. Thank you. So, great song. Great tune. Great band. Lessons, Amazing band. Lessons in lunch. Lessons in lunch. So what I'm going to ask you, is it the tone you like? Is it, the, do you like the... It's just, <laughs> you know what I'm going to say what is it? about what I like, about why I like your guitar playing. Oh, you don't Why I like that. that type of guitar playing, because there is zero ego going on. It just works. It fits. It's it's just when something it's like you know when you get Jenga and it all fits really nicely mm -hmm. and there's none of that <laughs> that's my weird OCD brain mm -hmm. but it fits with the busy bass because you couldn't have had a biddly 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 over that no. bass you hate biddly 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 I'm not a big biddly is... fan. Ray's, that's Ray's word for whittling uh, for yeah. for for shredding. <laughs> Shred biddly, biddly. I mean some shredding when it's when it fits. And when, when there's no ego. When it's at the end of the fade out, just as, as you can hear the like yeah. the first bit of tapping. Or I something. just like the fact that everything sits really nicely in that track. And it's a busy bass. And I don't know how he sings and plays that bass at the same time, honestly. I really don't. Um, oh, difficult. It is. Difficult. It but is. it just, and it's the tone. It's not ear piercing. It's got a really and nice. And it's a solo in a pop song. It's a solo which, in a pop which song. Which they actually it's... used to have as yeah. some... And it doesn't go on for eight minutes. No. No, it's a good good solo. Mm. Boone. I think that was Boone. Gould. Oh, Bless him. Yeah, the whole song's brilliant. Yeah. The band's brilliant. I love They're them. They're brilliant. They're they are great. brilliant. Still love them now. I know. After all these years. I know. And it still sounds so fresh. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I do remember the first show I saw where he came, Mark King came swimming, uh, swinging across swimming? the stage. <laughs> swimming across the stage. That's a different, that's Taylor Swift, I think. <laughs> Um, Mark King came swinging across the stage, like doing his bass solo. Awesome. I think that was when I was, I, I went to Wembley Arena to watch that. And I was right. like, that's what I'm going to do. I went with my, old, my my school friends, Ian and Jeff. Hmm. Very first concert I went to. I used to get, I, I'd get excited when I saw them carrying out the pedal boards and stuff like that. And flight cases, mm, I could see flight mm. cases. I was like, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Very cool. So I'm very cool. I'm. Uh, I've just ordered a swing on uh, <laughs> on eBay. <laughs> just going to get some sh strong feel, enough. Feel your boots, Strong mate. enough underpants so I don't feel chafe. Your boots. So I don't chafe. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I did just be sick in my mouth then. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Thank you very much. I just had a really horrible vision of you. Oh no! Like... <laughs> don't do that. I've got to eat my dinner later. Don't do that. Don't do that. Stop. Sorry, right. I'm sniffling. I've you got are. the sniffles. I think it's hay fever season coming. It's all right. I'll de I'll de sniff it later. Are you going to de sniff it? I'll use it? a de sniff Brilliant. plug in later. No, I won't. I can't be bothered. Um, the next song is Soundgarden, <laughs> Black Hole Sun, which is awesome. Uh, awesome. Awesome. I'll just play the first first opening bits of it. Oh. Oh, panning. This was a single. Excuse me, joy. Voice. In my eyes, in this pose, in disguise as no one knows. As the face lies the snake. That's awesome. It is awesome. And it's it, the end's really good. That's it? awesome. The end's really good. It's amazing how big 
huge. Everything sounds. And the reason is, is because there's one guitar, bass, drums and vocal. Absolutely. And everything sounds absolutely, absolutely huge. Yeah. And there's another band that does that really well, and I haven't chosen one of their songs, the Chili Peppers. Chili Peppers, yeah, absolutely. Just, yeah, the bigger, the, yeah. The, the less there is on a track, the bigger everything is. Totally. Um, everything has to matter. Yes, indeed. Very, very cool. Yeah, very cool. And his voice, oh. I know. He was a genius. Bless him. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah. really cool. Um, Beautiful voice. Great sound. Do you want to know what the pedals are that you used on You can, I'll get some... <laughs> Champagne. I actually don't know. It sounds like a Leslie of some kind. Does it? Yeah. Yeah. You're not interested Ooh, in Leslie. that. How <laughs> bored do you get? How much do you glaze over when I start talking about guitar sounds? <laughs> it depends. It depends. Sometimes it's really interesting. Other times. <laughs> What's it like? listening to me I don't rant I, about do you know what I, I actually love it because I think that you are you have such passion and I love seeing people with passion mm. and doing something that gives them so much passion and you say to me all the time I'll never retire I'll never retire no you know I'm and right. it's not luck it is determination and will and it, it, yeah will and, and won't and, yeah. Will and won't. But I don't think you're massively... I don't think you're hugely geeky about it. You're not... I do get... You're not, oh, oh don't don't chip that guitar. Oh, no. you, you're the world's worst for knocking stuff about. I am a bit bad at it. A bit bad at it. Well, but it's, like you say, it's a, it's a tool. It's yeah. not a... You yeah. know, it's to be used. That's... Uh, yeah, I want to know how he, how he got that guitar sound. Yeah. Mm. Okay, well, very Google cool. It. It's huge. It's massive. Huge. And then at the end, when it all, yeah, oh, it's epic. Kim, epic. Epic. What was his guitar? The guitar player's Kim Thale. Kim Thale, I think. Right. Awesome. Amazing. Awesome. Next tune is oh yeah, this is awesome. Oh one. yeah. <sighs> Here we go. Your son will like this one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. Just dirty. guitar in the right ear. What a genius. What a genius. What an all round. What, what is it about? So just going back to the guitar bits. Mm. What is it about those that you love? Dirty. Dirty, dirty, <laughs> dirty, 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 dirty boys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Dirty. Dirty. Just filthy. Filth. Robert Fripp and... Filth in your face. It, all over. And you. it's shameless. Shameless. But filth. it's... It's quirky, it's oh, weird, it's, it's it's non brave. It's, it's not music school stuff. No. Yeah. No. No. Yeah, it's really cool. As much as all that stuff is great too. It, no, no, it's not, but that is something you, you can't <laughs> You cannot uh, teach. Yeah. That. And I wonder how many takes that was. Because oh, I love the one or many. two take. It won't have been many. Yeah. 
He didn't. Yeah. He, he didn't go for too many takes. No, Bowie. But that's uh, Robert Fripp and and uh, Carlos Alomar. Those picky part, mm. parts are just incredible. Awesome. Oh. And they matter. They they just bring it all in. And again, not too many layers. No, just no, little. No. It's not a. It's not a bank of noise. It's not no. a wash of noise. You it's can pick every single part out. Pretty damn amazing. Which is pretty damn amazing. Pretty damn amazing. And uh, filth. <laughs> In your ear. Dirty, dirty, <laughs> dirty, dirty. Yeah. Filth. That's what yeah. was written on the chart mm. when they uh, when they did it. Amazing. So he, I, I don't know what album it was, but he used to apparently he used to write chords on a, a board. Okay. And he used to have the band in the room, mm. and he would just they'd be doing a groove. Dennis Davis and the bass player and guitar player Carlos Alomar, and he used to just point to chords and then. Randomly point to another one and just Amazing. record it, and Amazing. then he'd write a song over that. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. Amazing. What we got next <laughs> is. <laughs> I want to. I want to learn how he got that uh, phase. Do it thing. in your Christopher Walken voice. I can't do that. You can do Foo it. Foo Fighters. Foo Fighters. Foo Fighters. Foo Fighters. The Foo Fighters. So we got Foo Fighters next, <laughs> and you know I can't. Mon this one. This will. <clears throat> Immediately be demonetized this video. Oh, oh, oh no, really? <laughs> oh, like, like oh. we're going to miss that yeah, minus, that <laughs> minus 25 pounds that we could potentially earn. Um, Dogs, you're going to have to forego your half of gravy bone this week. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh, <coughs> uh, yeah. Boom. Oh, but you can't overlook the voice, man. I would love a gig like this. I'd love a gig like oh. this. I'd be at the front every gig, just moshing the arse out of it. <laughs> Mosh everyone else out of the room. Yeah. <laughs> Wicked. <laughs> So what is it about that that you were... Uh, energy. Just, a just energy. It's, do you know what? It's feel good. Yeah, it's yeah, feel yeah. good. It's yeah. high energy. It's high octane. And it's interesting because it's still so melodic. His voice is still... It's yeah, not, he's it, not... He's, well, he does, he does kick off a bit later on. But mm. it's just such a powerful... What a great gig that must be. God, yeah. What a great gig that must be to do. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> yeah but yeah um, again everything you can hear it all it's mm -hmm. all very clear it's all really lovely mix yeah amazing and then his voice just is the cherry that we've got a cherry on top yeah, the dogs are about to go <clears throat> they're about to kick off we've got one more tune our dogs don't start there you go, there you go. sorry about that Good. everybody um <laughs> We Life got, in the Harris house, household, isn't it? It certainly is. <clears throat> so we've got one more tune. Where are we at? We're at 30, 38 minutes. 38 minutes. Do you know what? I'll, I'm going to bear with me one second. I'll, I'll fill in. You can fill in. I'm going to give them something to keep them occupied. And some more <clears throat> champagne. And some more champagne. I yes, shall... sir. I will be back momentarily. Thank you, darling. Thank you, darling. Come on, you two. Um, <clears throat> my wife. Ladies... Lady and Jen, I think we've only got probably one woman that, act, one lady, one female that listens to this podcast because uh, I've looked at my analytics and it's usually fellas. Um, but yeah, I just thought it'd be funny to have Ray on here. Yeah, we we play quite a lot of music in the house. It's usually the same five <laughs> five Randy albums. Crawford. Randy Crawford. Um, yeah, we usually play oh, the same know. five albums. Yeah. Um... Uh, who is it? Quincy Jones. Quincy Jones. Uh, Ray LaMontagne. Ray LaMontagne. Beck. Beck. Yeah. Rye. Rye. Yeah. Who champagne. Else? How decadent champagne, is this? Champagne. Champagne. Yes. Why not? It's Easter. It's Easter, apparently. It's Easter Sunday. Thank you. Whatever 
whatever you are doing around the globe. Yes. Have fun. Mm. Live in peace. That's my motto. Yes, indeed. Above all, be kind. There. Be Sorry, kind, folks. Be kind it's of what? It's got to be done. Yeah, we're... Um... And the dogs are out there now. Got um, a big one sleeping who won't move, but the other two will start to get sassy. Fly in the room. Um, right. So last track is by Randy Crawford. It's one of our. It's one actually one of our favourites. It's beautiful. Here we go. And this is a big departure for you. <laughs> big departure. <laughs> Oh, that chorus. <laughs> Such an amazing record. Not if you don't, worthy. guitar players out there, if you don't oh. know that album, it's. Well, uh, we've got my mum to thank for that album. Yeah. Well, you my grew up listening to, listen. to that. This is my childhood, basically. It's an amazing record. Yeah. It's a, an amazing guitar record. It's oh, got Dean Parks beautiful. on it. Um, I don't know who the other guitar player is, but it's Joe Sample. No idea. Abe Laboreal on bass. It's just. It's just beautiful. It's just beautiful. It's it's almost classical. Yeah. I mean, obviously you got your violins in there, but it's so peaceful. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just a great record. That's like the, you know, part of the golden age of session guitar. Playing I can imagine me. you playing on that track. Uh, that's the kind of guitar that you would come up with for a track like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, you would well, because that's thank you very much. why I like your playing because you're very. Your everything you do matters. Thank you very much. <laughs> and it has no ego. Thank you very like much. Like you, darling. Oh, bless you. But no, it, that <laughs> is. Yeah, that's a masterclass in oh, beautiful guitar. The whole album is amazing. Mm, great yeah. album, isn't it? It is. We listen to that. <laughs> you say to me, "What do you want to put on the vinyl?" Yeah, it's always Randy Crawford. Oh, it's always that always album. Always start with that. Yeah. And the other album I want, we should get, actually, I think we've got it, but it's a bit knackered. It's the uh, one with You Might Need Somebody on it. I think mm, we've got that. We've got it, yeah. It just, uh, we need to get a better version of that. Yeah. But that's one, that's in one of the five that is in constant yeah, rotation. Yeah, constant rotation, yeah. And but, it has been for about eight years. Yeah. <laughs> Bloody hell. When we found that, I was just overjoyed. Yeah, that's record. great. That's her first record, isn't it? I think uh, that's her yeah. first album. She's a she's an amazing singer. Amazing. She is. Beautiful voice, yeah, and and it was it was difficult just finding five. That was it was hard. It yeah, was we, hard. there could be so many. Mm. I've mm. just noticed, and I don't want to be. I've just no. This is the thing. We listen to music that's always a little bit older. We mm. very rarely mm. listen to new stuff. Mm, no, not really. Occasionally we do. If the kids come home and say, yeah. "Oh, listen to." try this yeah yeah 
or it'll be the brothers Landreth or yeah, something, which yeah, is yeah. new. Oh, or... he's got an amazing voice. He has got a they great voice. They have got an amazing voice. They voices. have. But it's, it's usually older sounding records that were made for vinyl. Most yeah. Of them. yeah, yeah. It's weird, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, but we do... I like vinyl. We, <laughs> we tend to sort of sit in the evenings, put some records on, and we don't really have the TV on much. No, it, no. Even when I've got friends around, yeah. who a lot of them are a lot younger than me, actually. A few of them are a lot younger. You get the vinyl out, they go, what's that? Yeah, yeah. What, what's, what's that? What's that? Is that is that what we're eating that's dinner a, off? That's a nice black um, plate. No, that's patronising. No. But I'll put that on in the background, mm. and it's just, it just the tone is just warm and... Yeah. Analog. 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 So... Through a... Valve amps. Well. Well, valve amps, yes, indeed. Um, yeah, that was it. Was it was good fun to do that. I enjoyed it. Kind of gave me a bit of joy listening to to the rock stuff again. I know because well, I we don't, don't really listen to it much anymore. We don't in the house. I think you we you've been on a bit of a simple minds kick oh, lately. Oh my god! We went yes. to see them last week. We did. <laughs> Joyous. It was good. <laughs> it was good. They had some amazing songs. Oh. Amazing. They have some amazing songs. There's, he's got the oh fantastic. He's got a great voice. voice. Yeah, it was great. Voices that don't need too much effect, too much tuning. Tuning. Everyone's like, tuned though nowadays. You know I, that. Yeah, and it doesn't work. I just think that the human voice isn't meant. Now we're going to not. We're going to set me off. <laughs> human voice isn't meant to be perfectly in tune although many singers are brilliant yeah yeah but it's just at doing that naturally it, i think you lose so much of the i was listening to tom bukovac the other day and he was mm. someone had complained that because he'd mentioned something about everyone has melodyne on their voice mm. and someone mm. had said oh no, you know back he said back in the day artists wouldn't have done that and he was actually quite right he said they would mm. he said the mm. thing the good thing about having melodyne is it means you don't have to beat the singer up. Mm. You don't have to make them do it over mm. and over again. Mm. Mm. Most of these singers are, especially in Nashville, and the people he's probably working with are incredible singers, <laughs> but it just means you can get the thing done yeah. quicker yeah. and you don't have to put them through the ringer. I think, no, but I, I think what we're talking about is that overproduced, oh, yeah. over, and, you, and you, you don't know who that, you couldn't tell who that singer is. That could sound no. like that person and that person, that person. And there, there's all the, always the formulaic voices that come out and they tend to be in fashion. Yeah. Whereas I think going back to, I mean, I was brought up, you were brought up in quite a musical household, music mm -hmm. playing all the time, different voices playing all the time. And actually it's good to hear a voice that's, I like voices that sound like, A, they're not trying to reach high notes and be very technical. And I mean, that's all marvellous. Mm -hmm. Don't get me wrong. I love a Whitney track. Um, but she also had a lot of power and passion in her voice. Yeah. Um, but I like voices that don't necessarily, they're not making a huge effort, but they seem to tell the story so well. Yeah. And I think that's what Jim Kerr does and what Chrissy Hine does and what Kate mm -hmm. Bush does. They use their voices in ways that take you through this journey without having, without ego. That's Kenny that's, snoring. No, I think it's one of my other, I think it's Herbie. No, it's Kenny snoring. Kenny snoring. Kenny snoring in the back. <laughs> <laughs> He's adding the bass. He is. Um, <laughs> But yeah, it, I, I but agree. But then I'm old school. I'm 50 this year, for Christ's sake. So, you know, what do I know? Leave it to the youngsters. Yeah. <laughs> Melodyne away. Melodyne away. Well, Fill your boots. Thank you, you know. my darling wife, for being on this it's podcast. It's my pleasure. Th thank you for having me. It's been fun. <laughs> it's been funny. It's been weird. It's been a joke. I've enjoyed listening to this. I know. It's great. Hearing that. Black Hole, sorry, I couldn't believe the panning, how far... <sighs> The guitar on right and left. Oh just, man, just huge, epic, yeah. great, well written songs that does not that do not, as my dear friend Martin Busher would say, doesn't shortchange the listener. Absolutely, amen to that. Change your second verse. Change your second verse. <laughs> change the lyrics of that second verse. Yeah. Don't shortchange your listener. Don't just put a, a more auto tune on the second no. verse. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. thank you for everyone watching and tuning in. Thank you. I hope I've not bored you. I very much doubt it. It's been a pleasure. Um, thanks for watching and uh, hopefully I'll see you next week. I might do another one this week because I've got a bit of a quiet week this week. So I might. That'd be nice. You could get Ollie in. Get Ollie in. Or get I'll Ollie do, in. Yeah, get my son in. 
Yeah. He's coming around shortly. He's a little star, that aspect. one. One to watch, one to watch. Yes. Yeah, bless him. He's been here before, that one. <laughs> bless him. He has. His music, his musical tastes say it, that he's been here before. Mum's trousers. Mum's trousers. <laughs> <laughs> mum's trousers. It's not a private joke. He Isn't wears it? my mum's trousers. He does. My mum gave him a pair of trousers because she thought that he would like them. Oh no, she gave them to me. They didn't fit. And he got, Yeah, he wears. Now them. he wears them. He likes his big flares. Yeah, so. big flares. Happy Easter or, Happy or whatever Easter. holiday you are, or just whether you're having a Sunday. Yeah, have or a lovely Or if you're Sunday. watching this on Wednesday, Happy Wednesday. Happy Wednesday. Have a lovely week and uh, chin chin. See you Take soon. Care. Bye. Bye. I'm looking, so the camera's there. I've not even been looking at the camera most of the time. <laughs> I'm looking at the screen, checking this all recording. Because I'm a bell end. Peace. Take care all. Bye. Bye. <laughs>